Hi there, this is the first of two films that you might watch as an introduction to the solutions topic in year 12. Um, these two films kind of go ahead of the uh, five um, film series about solutions. Okay, and um, the purpose of these two films is just to remind us of some of the work that we did in the bonding topic about solutions and also to cover something called iron dipole forces. But in this particular film, um, we're going to try and remember how it is that we explain the solubility of substances um, of certain solutes and different solvents and we're going to try and uh, just remind ourselves quickly of the definitions of solubility that we find on the data sheet. Okay, so first of all, what happens when things dissolve? Remember what we're going to try and do every time we try and explain this, why does this substance dissolve in another? We're going to try and identify the forces broken and the forces made and we're going to make some comparison between those forces okay so before something dissolves here we've got some barium chloride which is in solid state in a beaker of water presumably okay there are solvent solvent forces so that is forces between the solvent molecules that are going to have to be broken to get the solute particles in between them and there's also solute solute forces which are going to have to be broken by the solvent in order to split this um, solute up. Okay, so by the time we've formed our solution, we've got solvent solute forces, that is forces between the solvent and the solute. So we're replacing these forces with these ones. Okay, but it's not good enough just to talk about them in va these vague terms. You need to try and make sure you're actually identifying what type of solvent, solvent, solute, solute, or solvent, solute forces are actually breaking. Okay, so here's a particular example of one of those type of explanations. Why does petrol not mix well with water? Okay, so let's treat petrol as our solute, although water could equally well be our solute, depending on which one's in the majority. But let's treat this as our solute. Okay, what solute solute forces have we got? Well, this is a non-polar molecule. Okay, so there's only going to be dispersion forces here. Okay, so hydrocarbon, all hydrocarbons are non-polar. Here's water, which is polar, okay, and actually has dipole-dipole forces, but it also has hydrogen bonds, okay. So we only say hydrogen bonds. We don't mention the dipole-dipole forces as well if there's both, because remember hydrogen bonds are a form of dipole-dipole force, but we do mention the dispersion forces because they're a different type of force, okay. So we're going to try and be systematic in our explanation. That is to say, we're going to say what forces break what forces are made and then make some comparison so name and compare the forces broken with those that are made okay so we are breaking breaking dispersion forces in the petrol and hydrogen bonds in the water as well as dispersion okay so this is petrol here and this is the water and we're making well what forces can we make well only dispersion forces between the petrol and the water so once we've identified those things we can say that the dispersion forces that we make are not strong enough because this thing does not mix well okay so these dispersion forces that we make are not strong enough to overcome the hydrogen bonds and dispersion forces that we had to break between the water molecules. Okay, it's not often the case that you'll have to predict on this sort of basis what, whether things are going to dissolve or not, because it can sometimes be difficult to know whether the dispersion forces are going to make up for this kind of thing. But if you know that something doesn't dissolve well, then you can say that the forces that you've made are not strong enough to make up for the ones that you broke. Okay, so once again, be systematic mention the forces that were broken, mention the forces that were made, and make a comparison between the two. Okay, but actually name those forces. Now just finally, just to look at these definitions of what solubility is, if everything dissolves, then surely everything is soluble. Okay, um, but that's not really the case because we define different degrees of solubility in different ways. So we define anything that dissolves more than 0.1 of a mole in every litre of solvent as a soluble substance. 
anything in this range here between 0 0.01 and 0 0.1 is slightly soluble and we term things that dissolve less than 0 0.01 of a mole in every litre, we term those insoluble even though a very small amount of them will dissolve. So for example if you're looking at oxygen um, which is often described as being very very sparingly soluble in water or in other words insoluble in water that suggests that nothing ought to be able to breathe underwater but obviously fish do and if you're going for your forces explanation then you're going to say well the dispersion forces that form between oxygen and water molecules okay they're not going to be strong enough to make up for the fact that we broke hydrogen bonds between the water molecules okay but clearly that doesn't mean that none of the substance dissolves okay so as far as your forces explanations go they're just going to explain whether something dissolves well or not okay it's not going to allow you to decide whether something dissolves or not because really everything dissolves to some extent so i suppose that's a little bit of a confusing note to finish on but that's about it for this film next film to watch is the one about iron dipole forces.